I'm going to be drawing Newman projections for the different conformations of butane. I'm also going to be talking about the different potential energies and stabilities of those conformations. So I already have a Newman projection video about ethane, just to give you the basics of how to draw a Newman projection. But now I have a larger, more complicated molecule. So you are going to see a different potential energy diagram, and this molecule is going to give me the opportunity to introduce some new terminology to you, like anti-Gauss-Sin, dihedral angle, steric hindrance, and so on. Let's take a closer look at this molecule. I have four black carbons in a chain and a total of 10 yellow hydrogens. All of these bonds are single bonds, and single bonds can rotate. That means I can have a lot of different possible arrangements of this molecule. These arrangements are called conformations. And a Newman projection is useful for drawing the conformation about a specific bond. So I'm going to choose the bond between carbons two and three. Let's number the carbons. One, two, three, four. If I'm drawing a Newman projection about carbons two and three, I want to orient this molecule in such a way that carbon two and three are in my line of sight. This is the orientation from which I want to draw Newman projections. So let me rotate this molecule so that carbons two and three are in your line of sight. Let's start drawing. The carbon in the front is represented by a dot, and the carbon in the back is represented by a circle. Each of these carbons has a total of four bonds, but one of those bonds is between these two carbons. We can't really see that from this orientation. So I just need to draw the other three bonds on each of these carbons. So the carbon in the front has a methyl group, meaning a CH3 group pointing up, and it has two hydrogens. One is down to the left, one is down into the right. Now this is an eclipsed conformation. Eclipsed means the groups on the back carbon and the groups on the front carbon are in each other's way. They're as close to, as they can be to each other. That makes this Newman projection hard to draw. I need to draw another CH3 group immediately behind this one, but on the back carbon. There's not a perfect way to do that, so we just draw it as close as we can. Same with the two hydrogens on the back carbon. But I can describe this particular conformation as having a dihedral angle of zero degrees. Dihedral angle is referring to the angle between these two CH3 groups, between the two large groups, as it appears when we align carbons two and three in our line of sight. I have an empty potential energy diagram in front of me. The x-axis is dihedral angle, y-axis is potential energy. I'm going to go through drawing Newman projections at each of these dihedral angles so that we can take a look at what this plot looks like. Let's consider the potential energies and stabilities of each of these. So in my video about ethane, you learned that eclipsed conformations have higher potential energies and lower stabilities than staggered conformations. That is still true here, but the eclipsed conformations are not the same as each other, and the staggered conformations are not the same as each other. Let's first consider this dihedral angle of zero degrees. So, in my molecular model, at this zero degree dihedral angle, you can see that hydrogens on carbon one and hydrogens on carbon four can actually hit to each other. They are too close together. This is called steric hindrance. The outermost part of atoms is where the electrons orbit. Those electrons repulse each other. The closer these atoms are to each other, the less stable the conformation is and the higher the potential energy is. So this zero degree dihedral angle is going to be the highest potential energy. This particular conformation is called SYN, S-Y-N. Now, zero degrees and 360 degrees are the same as each other. Our other eclipsed conformations are 120 and 240 degrees. These are still eclipsed, but they're not as bad. We have a methyl group eclipsing a hydrogen, a hydrogen eclipsing a methyl group, a hydrogen eclipsing another hydrogen. Let's rotate this to see how close these hydrogens can get. 
we can see that carbons one and three have hydrogens that are close to each other. Carbon two and carbon four have hydrogens that are close to each other. This is still steric hindrance, but it is not nearly as bad as this syn conformation. So 120 and 240, these are still going to be high potential energy. They're the same as each other, but they're not as high as syn conformation. So, so far I have shown you the various types of eclipsed conformations. Now let's move on to staggered. So let's take a look at this 180 degree dihedral angle. This is the most stable, lowest potential energy. So the two methyl groups are as far apart from each other as they can possibly be. This is the least amount of steric hindrance we can have without this molecule falling apart. So 180 degrees is going to be our lowest potential energy, most stable conformation. This is called an anti-conformation. Now, let's consider the 60 degree and 300 degree staggered conformations. In both of these cases, we're staggered, so it's lower potential energy and more stability, but these two methyl groups are closer to each other than they were in this anti-conformation. If you take a look at the hydrogens on carbons one and four, they are kind of close to each other. So these are still low potential energy, high stability, but they're not as good as this 180 degree angle. They are the same as each other. So these two conformations, this is called gauche. G-A-U-C-H-E, gauche. People say that chemistry has confusing terminology, but in this case, anti comes from the Greek for opposite of, and gauche comes from the French for left, so it's not a matter of confusing terminology, it's just that you need to take the time to learn every single language in the world before studying chemistry if you want the terminology to make sense. Now, I have given you potential energies and Newman projections for certain specific conformations, but any of those in-between angles are also possible conformations. This bond can just freely rotate. So I want to show you what the full potential energy diagram looks like for those in-between conformations. In my next video, I'm going to take this molecular model of octane with eight carbons in a chain and rotate each and every carbon-carbon bond to put it in its most stable conformation just to see what the molecule ends up looking like. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell. If you feel that I've earned it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.